Right there? All right. Thank 
give you a view of the outside, what's going on here. I started out the evening with dinner. So, in the tent. And you're going to hear a little bit about the story of this chapel. Yeah, we're getting ready to start here, so hit share, invite your friends. We're running a little late, we have some infinite weather, but we'll be starting here soon. She's narrating these again. Yeah, this is the man of the hour. The man of the hour right here. Which again, you're going to hear about. Hi, everybody. Welcome. church and when Sunday service was over I wished I could stay. I wish everybody would I wish everybody would just leave and I could just stay there and just have that intimacy inside of the church. And, uh, and as a, an adult I've, I've dreamed of having a chapel where I can talk to my kids, where I can come by myself, a glorified prayer closet where I can have friends and, and family come and, and 
worship and pray and then we'll finish it. So this is beyond, I'm going to have goosebumps right now. This is an amazing, an amazing moment. Uh, so uh, I just, I have to say, this is, uh, uh, this is a horse barn, right? This, what you're standing on is a dirt floor with horse poop. <laughs> um, I mean, we have two by fours, I mean, not right now, but we have two by fours, is all there was on the side, and some tent. There was no four wheeler. It was just dirt, poop, two horses. One of them kicked a buddy of mine in the face, so I got rid of And I was out here one night just standing on this dirt, and, and I was seeking God about some stuff. I was going through some stuff, and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't figure it out. And I just thought, I'm going to go stand in that building and just try to figure it out. And I remember I went back to, I kind of felt like a kid again. And I thought, man, I wish I had a church. I wish I had a place I could just put some pews in it and it, a church. And then I thought, why not here? Why not inside this church? Well, that's crazy. But why not? I called a buddy of mine. He called a buddy of his. He called a buddy of his. And somebody was out of work and they came over here. And, and, and the guy needed to be here. He needed what this offered. And, uh, And so this is just tremendous for me. And I I thank you all for being here. I want to make sure I soak it up just right. I love all of you. And this uh, to have all of you here is such an honor for Sonia and myself. And it brings me great pleasure. I can think of no one else I would rather pray and dedicate this church than, than my brother in law, John Brown. Thank you. we thank you for this vision that Jimmy had here. We thank you for this sacrifice that Sonia and Jimmy have made to take a piece of their property and to erect a building where you can be worshipped and praised and thanked for all the good things that you do. And God, we just glorify you today for them and their family. Bless them tenfold, God, for the investment that they've made here, not only in this field, but in our prayer services that we've been having, just continue to move on their family and help them. And Father, we thank you for every person in this room tonight. Each person has a special place. It's no mistake that they're here tonight. You have a purpose and a plan for each one of us tonight, and we're just here to celebrate you tonight, God, to celebrate your people, and Lord, to dedicate this building to you, and to dedicate this time to you. Father, I pray every time the doors are open that the very presence of God would be in this place. That the Holy Ghost would fall on whoever is in here tonight, Lord. Just christen it right tonight, God. Just go ahead and let your spirit fall in this place, Lord. We thank you for that, God, that you are a God that we can feel in our souls, God. Amen. So, Lord, bless every singer tonight as they sing and Touch every person here and all the folks watching online around the world. This is not a show tonight. This is worship. This is praise to the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we thank him for all that is taking place and all that's going to take place. In Jesus' holy name I pray. And everyone say it. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to uh, sing one. Y'all know this song, so you sing right along with me, all right? Of all power, of all peace, of all nature and all created things, of all wisdom and all
and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all And treasures of the world. There's no way to measure what you're doing. Crucified and lay behind the stone. You live to die, rejected.
we have we have reached our goal, and uh, it was fifty thousand dollars. So. check in and share the live broadcast on each person's Facebook. That's a great idea. If you have signal out here, you should. Um, if you don't care, you get your phone out and, um, and go and on the Isaacs. So. The Isaacs. <laughs> <laughs> and put it away. Or no, you can share. It's fine. Uh, but then go to the Isaacs.com and you'll just share this link right now Then all your friends can watch it too. Um, and everybody online share it. So that would be great. So um, anyway, we're raffle we have a, a raffle for every $20 you give, your name will go in the drawing that many times. Um, and so some of you are going to have your name in a lot, I guess. Uh, we're giving away a mandolin signed by all the artists here tonight. We're also giving away a gift basket that Reba McIntyre donated. She could not be here tonight, but she sent uh, some really great things, and we'll tell you more about that later. And we also have a, um, a nice football that's signed by Terry Bradshaw, the NFL quarterback, uh, sports broadcaster. So those are just a few of the prizes that we have. So go online and give on the Isaacs.com. And uh, bless Israel. The Lord said, I'll bless those that bless Israel. Amen. And so you guys are going to be blessed. All right? So thank you for blessing Israel. I just had to get that out of the way. And uh, we may have to say that again throughout the night. But right now we're going to sing a song. Uh, Mom? Yeah? Becky, do you play in Hebrew? Well, <laughs> it's a Hebrew song. This could be brutal. It's only the second time I've played it. And I don't play Hebrew. So. <laughs> well, it's in Hebrew. So nobody will know it's myself. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I want to say thank you while she's getting ready to a couple of people that worked so hard to get this. This church was finished this morning, y'all. Uh, they worked very hard in spite of the rain, and I do apologize for the mud. Obviously, there's nothing we can do about that, and the chilly wind and all that. And I've never sang with muddy boots, obviously. So really, uh, um, but uh, I want to thank uh, our friend Robert um, right up for helping so much, and his mom came out and helped us. Um, Alan. Alan Eastep and his uh, wife Kathy worked. He's the one that really built this church. So thank you, Alan. He couldn't be here tonight because he was up all night for two nights finishing it. Um, he's sleeping. But anyway, and also I want to thank some special people, uh, Barb Lambiesa and uh, Dave for working so hard to set up the tents and Barbie and, and Caleb and everybody that helped us so much. So I just want to thank you. All of you.
every religion, every country, no matter what color your skin is or where you're from, God, we're all people. Father, we all deserve the right to worship you how we please. And Father, I'm so grateful that I know you as my Yeshua tonight. Yes. Father, we honor these people and we thank you. We praise you, Lord, and bless these people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Most of you know that my parents are Holocaust survivors. And um, so this mission was very personal to me. I lost my mom at the age of 95 four years ago. My father passed away many years ago, but all my life I grew up hearing stories about the Holocaust. And I never knew my grandparents. They were all killed before I was ever born. I was robbed of that for no other reason than hatred. And I, res I refuse to believe that that's who we are today. But you know, blessing Israel this way feels good. It's healing. And we want to bless the people in Israel. Muslims, the Jews, the Christians, we want to bless Israel. Sonia wrote a beautiful song. Sorry, I had to order my stuff. So this is a song that I learned as a little girl growing up in New York, and it's appropriate tonight. And uh, we want to say thank you to Steve Dick, who is with Inspiration Tours. They've hosted us to Israel many years now. But this song is taken from Psalms 133, verse 1. The English translation is, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell. 
us together in unity. Suitcase each to hold their lives on cattle cars that hushed their cries. now lest we forget the ones who felt the tracks of death cause they were on the train to hell and few were those who lived to tell and heaven made their spirits dwell those who rode the train to hell mm -hmm.
That's right. That's right. That's right. So we're honored for that legacy. Um, by the way, artists, if you um, have an instrument you want to like pick along or sing along, please do. I mean, this is that was the sad part. The rest will be. <laughs> um, all right. Now this time, where's Levi? Speaking of our heritage and uh, the legends that will the legacy that will be. to that song and I see what's happening in the world today uh, the Nazi movement uh, anti-Semitism it, it's all a, an assignment to cancel what God is trying to do in the Jewish people and I fully believe that what's going on right here and I'm not just saying this because I'm part of the family I truly believe that this is marking the movement to get the Jewish people to accept Messiah as a true and living Yes, and I fully believe that, like, uh, what is it, Joel, that said, I will pull out my support, spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. And that includes the Jewish people. And that includes us. And I fully believe that there's going to be a Holy Spirit movement across the entire world that is going to lead us to Christ. And it's going to set up a kingdom here on earth. And uh, the song has, that I'm singing has nothing to do with that. But, uh, but I had to get that off my heart because it was just killing me. So, uh, back, back home again? All right. It's an old John Denver song called Back Home Again. Oh, <laughs> 
Thank you. 
You know, uh, this little chapel here, I tell you, it's just so beautiful. It reminds me of, it's just, just such a simple little place, but the simplicity of God's love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't it great that it's simple? Yeah. We make it complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's so complicated, but it's just simple. All we need to do is believe in Jesus Christ. And he'll do the rest. Amen. He died to save all of us. Yes. Yeah. And that's the simplicity of salvation. Mm -hmm. yes. With that, I'm going to go <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to take a breath and she'll be gone. And she said, she can't do anything. There's nothing left in her body. And she's, uh, you know, she's close to death right now. She's going to, you know, can get. And so uh, I sat back and I just watched my mom and I held her hand. And right before she, right after she took her last breath, basically, she sat up in the bed and grabbed a hold of the bed, sat straight up and opened her eyes wide open. She looked up and she said, oh, my Lord Jesus. You know, I mean, I don't know how to explain that other than the fact that, you know, there's a higher power you know, yeah. 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 than what we, anything that we know of. And so this kind of inspired that song. The reason I can sing it is because I know, I know where she's at. I know we'll get to see her again one day. I know just some of the reasons why I believe it. When I see the sunrise in the morning, when I feel the wind blow across my face, sing it to me. When I
Peter uh, literally called one day and said, it looks like you're going to get into Palestine and we can sing four days late at Lazarus's tomb. So we recorded it in the year 2000. So we've been singing this song every night ever since for every night I mean, of our program and still our most requested song. And we were so excited. We were telling everybody we're going to sing uh, four days late at Lazarus's tomb. And, and then when we got over there halfway through the trip, they said, you better start praying because we're not sure they're going to let you in. And so finally, the last morning of the trip, uh, we got on the bus and they said, we're going to Palestine. And so we got over there and they said, you only have time to get your picture made outside the cave and you won't be able to go in, but you can get your picture made under the Lazarus' tomb sign. And we said, we will take it. But y'all have never seen so much crying and taken on in your born days. <laughs> I felt like we'd met an old friend, Lazarus. <laughs> So, um, but anyway, we were leaving, and, and as we were leaving, Becky came running up the hill, and uh, I say your name every night, by the way. But Becky came running up the hill, and she looked at the guards, and she said, would you at least let the Peck family go in and see Lazarus' tomb? They've been singing about Lazarus for a long time. And so they said, okay, well, uh, you know, make it quick. So my husband, Ricky, got his phone and queued up the song. And here we were going down in the cave. The news came to Jesus. <laughs> oh, and so wow. we got to the bottom, and we, know, we noticed we had to crawl into a hole this, maybe the size of a monitor. And we got on our hands and knees and literally <laughs> crawled into the cave. And there we stood in Lazarus' tomb. And, um, and we noticed people had written notes, and they folded them up, and they put them in the bottom of the cave. And so I thought there's no way that we could be here and not say something. And so we didn't have a piece of paper anywhere. And but Carrie had an old brochure and we tore it off. And on that brochure I wrote on there, when he's four days away, he's still on time. And I folded it up, put it in the bottom of the cave, and we came out and we sang the song at the foot of the hill at the church. And Steve, thank you for making all of that happen because that was such a bucket list for us. But I can say this, and honestly, that was a bucket list, but going after there to the garden tomb, that was what changed our lives forever because we didn't have to go to Israel to know that Jesus was not in that tomb. And we do serve a risen Savior who is never going to be laid in our lives. Amen. donate to help us bless Israel. When we go to Israel, um, this actually in December, December 3rd, we're having a concert in Jerusalem to bless Holocaust survivors and uh, Israeli soldiers, and we're going to bless an orphanage there. And we need you to donate. If you go online and donate, um, for every $20 that you donate, your name will go into a drawing. We're going to give away some wonderful prizes. We have some items uh, autographed by Reba McIntyre and donated. We have a, a football by Terry Bradshaw that we're going to be giving away. We're also giving away... Um, what am I forgetting? Autographed mandolin. Oh, yes, a mandolin that's autographed by all these folks that are here tonight, Vince and Ricky and the Whites and Amy Grant. And so anyway, everybody's signing it. So um, so if you're interested in that, it's just an incentive. I know you want to give anyway to Bless Israel, yes. like everybody here has, and uh, but it's just an incentive for you to do it tonight. So go on the Isaacs.com. Take a moment right now and do it. Go on the Isaacs.com and click on the, the right there on the front page. It says that to learn more about giving. Fishman Isaac's Israel Initiative and, and make your donation. Tax deduction, that helps all of us this time of year. Um, so here we are anyway at the Yuri Chapel. So. I just named it that. Yearly <laughs> Yuri Chapel. Okay, Ben, will you introduce our next guest? Me? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh, one more thing. I forgot. <laughs> people that really uh, helped so much tonight. And I left out Jeff Dalton, uh, yeah. Pastor Jeff Dalton and his church. Um, and Jeff is here working and, uh, and Barbie. And there was somebody else that I was going to thank. Oh, um, Connie and Rick Coleman. And Connie, thank you for running our Facebook broadcast tonight. And Roger, thank you as well. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. The next gentleman I'm going to sing is one of my favorite voices I've ever had an opportunity to, to work with. And, and I've been blessed to work with some really incredible vocalists. And uh, 
I love this man's songwriting. Of course, you know, Jimmy, uh, my, I mean, I'm just so, so blessed to be able to work with these guys. Uh, Tim Menzies has quickly become one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, much less sound. So, y'all love old Tim. <laughs> He's going to Israel with us too, so he'll be. Yeah. Yeah. It, ben and I are twins. Yes, we are. <laughs> I'm thankful to be grafted in. Yes, sir. Come on. We welcome you. He yes, pushed me from the table. <laughs> I'm honored to be here at Yuri's Chapel. It's a it's a complete blessing, and it's even better than I thought it would be. Uh, and I'm thankful to be here. The first word that God shares with us in His holy book. It's Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. If we start there, all 66 books come together perfectly. Yeah. In the beginning, God created, so we know God the Father has always been there. Verse 2 of Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit hovered, so we know God the Holy Spirit has always been there. By divine inspiration, the Apostle John identified Jesus in John 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word. We know from verses 14 and 17 that Jesus Christ is the Word. So in the beginning was the Word. Let's us know that in the beginning the Word already was. Amen. There's never been a time when Jesus was not. <laughs> in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Through him all things were made. How many things? All. all things. I believe all, translated from the Greek, means all. <laughs> we then read in 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. And I'm still fascinated that my desire to love him is only me loving him back. And that God, the creator of the universe, wants a relationship with each one of us and each one of them and each one of y'all. I'm thankful to have written this song about that. Omaha Beach and Vietnam I heard every soldier's cry and every mama's pray I was there I was there when you took your first breath and when you let that stolen lucky strike and locked the choker were waist deep in Carter's Creek and Pastor John dumped you down in the water and raised you up for air. I was there. I'm always around. I was then and I am now. And I'll be here when tomorrow comes. When a road comes to an end, I'm where you start again. I'm never farther than a word away. You've always got a friend. When your grandma passed, I was in that house. When your grandpa ran down the streets of gold to show her love. <laughs> I was there I'm always around I was then and I am now And 
And I'll be here when tomorrow comes. When a road comes to an end, I'm where you start again. I'm never farther than Highway 9 When you answered the phone And ran right through that stop sign I was in the cab of that big rig In that trucker's ear Made him swerve to the right And miss you by a hair I was there When you're feeling alone Look up I'm the one who answers prayers And I'm always there to me so we're standing at uh, somewhere pigeon forge i guess and i had some money in my pocket and i thought all right well tell me if you can guess how much money i mean i was there was like all kinds of ones and a five and a ten and i said timothy if you can guess how much money i got in my pocket i'll give it to you he looked at it he said thirty dollars <laughs> He still has my money. <laughs> his mom and dad said it's collect, collecting dust on his dresser. He still calls it Ben's money. But it Ben's money. <laughs> I'll get it back. I'll get it back someday. <laughs> Not through a bet. No, no, I've learned better yeah. than nothing with him. Spend it, honey. Yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. I think you laughed at me. When God decided to bring his great Old Testament prophet Elijah home, we read in 2 Kings. There was no funeral. Mm -hmm. right. Chariots of fire and horses of fire came down yeah. and carried Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only place I'd rather be than Yuri's chapel tonight is going up in a whirlwind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the 1850s, an African American slave named Wallace Willis was working beside the Red River in Choctaw County, Oklahoma, and he started thinking about Elijah and the Jordan and being taken up to heaven in a whirlwind. And he wrote that timeless classic, Swing Low, Sweet oh, Chariot. Wow. In 2015, it was made the official gospel song of the state of Oklahoma. Wow. And so that warms all these songwriters' heart. We yes. might have written a state song. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord doesn't tear it. 100 years from now, it might yeah. be a state song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 no, I've heard some of them. <laughs> yeah. Swing low, sweet chariot, men <laughs> for to carry me home. Swing low, Come on, <laughs> sweet chariot. Yeah. <laughs> 
A little strategic living here. There we go. He's being, he's being facetious. We, we can make it work. We're close. Yeah. <laughs> Folks out there in cyberspace. <laughs> uh, this is our dad, Buck White. <laughs> uh, we're blessed, blessed, and privileged to still be making music together. He's 87, be 80. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm, uh, I'm so full up, as the next cook used to say, I don't know if I can stand it anymore. This has been the most wonderful night, and it ain't over yet. We uh, have a few songs to share with you. Um, and it's funny, I told Sharon what I wanted to hear her sing, and she told me what she wanted me to sing. So this is, this she's is. singing my favorite. <laughs>
just a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a harp and a crack. I've got a mansion Sing with us. just over the hilltop in that bright land. kids, almost all of our kids live a long way off, and uh, we don't get to see them very much, but we know that they know the Lord, and that they're serving Him with all their heart, and that there's a, there's a satisfaction in them, because they're serving God, and they're doing what they're called to do. You can't argue with that. How can I argue with that? I know people whose kids are a continent away, and uh, they're serving the Lord. <laughs> and uh, and we, that's what we want. We want them to to be doing doing their father's business. Be about their father. And uh, I've sung this song for a long time. And uh, what I was going to tell you that I wasn't going to tell you. It's funny. I picked for her the song that she almost always cries when she sings. <laughs> and uh, it is one of our favorites, but I often can't sing this one without crying, because it tells literally the way I feel about my relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm a big old zero with that, in the, probably in the minus column, actually, <laughs> more than zero, certainly, a perfect zero. <laughs> but he has been so faithful to me and uh, he's good to me I even when I struggle to uh, sense Lord what what is this about that's the hardest stuff uh, I can work hard and I can do hard you know Stay up late and get up early and push and push and push. I can do those things. That's 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 the stuff my, that I can do. But it's the stuff that it's like what is what's what's good in this for me, God? Because all things work for good. Amen. What is the good in this, Lord? Right now, He ain't told me. <laughs> But I trust that it is, and I trust that, that whether I ever know it or not, it is. And uh, the truth is, is uh, I couldn't do any of it without it. So I learned this song off of an Elvis Presley record. Come on, Come on, Come on But it was written by Larry Gatlin, and we 
we've done, like I said, we've done it a long, long time. God help me. If y'all want to sing it, you might have to because I might cry. Yeah. <laughs> you got to kick off. You know, Bruce? Well, I don't know what it is. Help me. Help me. Then I, I'm asking you to help me. Oh, we are. <laughs> <laughs>
really a great honor to be here and uh, in this near manger. city and for our nation and, uh, and I say for the Jewish people as well Amen. Amen. Yeah. it's no, no coincidence that you know the first thing done in here is to bless the Jewish people and, uh, so when we bless them we bless the Lord Amen. And, uh, the covenant of Abraham you know, God hasn't broken that contrary to some people's opinion replacement theology like the, the church now is called Abraham's blessing but it, you know, because the Jews rejected Jesus couldn't be the farthest thing from the truth Amen. 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 Romans tells us that uh, we're to be honored and blessed to be grafted in Amen. so I take that with great humility and gratefulness for that I'm grafted in and uh, so song about Elijah, Elijah's uh, successor, Elijah. Elisha, yeah, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually he was bald, <laughs> hey bald head, <laughs> yeah, the bears had some lunch, <laughs> yeah, anyway, this is uh, the River of Jordan, oh, yeah, yeah. see ya.
growing up. That was or sound that was so dear to our hearts. They had something so pure. And we saw what pure was. And uh, it changed all of us. And um, so grateful to be grafted into the white. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, uh, when, when me and Miss Sharon got married, uh, I told her, you know, I was kind of grafted in Texan now, you know. And she well. said, well, you're a wannabe Texan. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm thankful for the whites. I'm thankful for their life. And, and uh, the example that Mr. Buck has been as a father, as a Christian, as a, uh, as a leader, uh, husband. I mean, he's just been, he's been there. And uh, now we're there for him. You know, and uh, honoring, honoring our father. And, uh, yeah. You know, we've honored fathers. I've honored musical fathers all my life and honored my dad and uh, honored uh, you know spiritual father Dr. Graham and, and uh, Bob Jones uh, prophetic Bob Jones and uh, so many people that's really been pillars in my life I've honored them and, and uh, but when, when Mr. Buck needed us you know, we needed to come and, and stay with us. It was like the Lord said, now I'm going to show you what it's really like to honor a father in your hands. Amen. And uh, so, you know, honor is the, it's the only commandment with a blessing. Mm -hmm. Honor your father and mother. Your days will go well with you and you'll prosper in the land. Mm -hmm. So we don't do it to get the blessing, but God's just want to automatically do it. You know, yeah. We honor Father. And, you know, you notice he didn't say fathers you like. <laughs> Good fathers. He said honor fathers. Give, give them the honor due to their name. So, you know, I had a, we were at Kufi last year, 2017, um, up in D.C. and uh, met some really precious Jewish people and, and uh, this one rabbi from a synagogue in the Northeast, he said, I walked by and he said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I'm, I'm here to bless Israel and bless Jewish people. Really? I said, yeah. But you're you're a aren't you a country music or a, yeah. I mean, aren't you a singer and art? And I said, well, yeah. Well, there's not many of you your kind that would take the time to be here. I said, well, you know, we love Jewish people. And uh, and I said Jesus is still a Jew. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's he's a card carrying Jew. <laughs> so, he hasn't changed his affiliation. And I said, so as a Christian, how can I love Jesus and not mm -hmm. love his brethren? And he started bawling. He just wept. He just grabbed me and he wept. And so we had a moment. <laughs> we just stood there. And he just cried and he cried. And, uh, you know, they can't deny her love. That's right. We've done so many things in the name of religion, mm -hmm. you know, that's just so wrong. <laughs> and we've, you know, we've judged them and they judge us back. You know, it's just a tit for tat so much. But I'm telling you, what y'all are doing, what y'all are doing is 
is absolutely life changing. Amen. Mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And, uh, Amen. You know, when we love God's people, you know, and He chose them. They didn't choose Him. Mm -hmm. He chose them out of all the nations of the world. He yeah. chose the Jews, mm -hmm. and uh, and He still chooses them. Yeah. Still loves them, and uh, and He cares about them, and He cares about what His plans are for their future, and uh, so anytime you give. To the Jews, you're giving, you're giving to the Lord. It's like like when you lend to the poor, you lend to the Lord. But you know when you they're they're poor in spirit. Okay, so they are poor in ways. You know they have a rich heritage, but sometimes they're they're, they're poor in spirit. So you know, and we should never get haughty, and we should never you know act like oh we have something you don't. You know, that's that's such pride. You know, and uh, we need to turn that into prayer. You know. And, and intercede and love them, you know. No matter what they do, no matter what they say to us, you know, we know better. And we, you know, we have a better covenant, you know. And so we need to take the low place, not the high place. Amen. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't lift somebody up if you're looking them in the face. You can't lift them up, you know. To lift someone up, you have to get down on your knees. Yeah. You have to get down in humility, down low. Amen. And then you can lift somebody up. Amen. And that's how way we should be with our Jewish brothers and sisters. So, Amen. so I, uh, I think I did this song. Did I not, Sharon? At the Kufi? Did I, I think I did. Why in the world would you do that? Well, because. <laughs> because uh, you know, so many people says, well, look what the Jews did. They killed Jesus. No, they didn't. No, uh -uh. nobody took his life. He gave his life. He gave his life. No, no one took it. And he did it. If one person would have believed, he would have done it just for that one. And uh, so, there's a lot going on there. And, uh, this is a... Uh, They beat him until the blood ran. They brought him to die on a cross up on high with spikes through his feet and his hands. You can use him, abuse him, mock and accuse him, sell him out for 30 pieces. Betray him, slay him. His eyes on the crowd, all of God's daughters and sons. They're betting on him, cursing at him. Forgive them for what they have done. You can't use him, abuse him, mock and accuse him. Sell him.
plan has orchestrated this somehow for each of us, but for me a little bit too. Um, Vince, I don't know that, uh, just growing up, the influence that Vince had on my life, uh, I don't know that I, possibly I could be the only person besides Vince to have sang Cinderella more times. Uh, so second right here, I just such an influence to have you in this church is an amazing thing. Uh, Tim Menzi, I remember the 24 years old I got in to an argument with the DJ because he didn't play you more. And, <laughs> I didn't understand how it worked. I'm like, he's incredible. Why are you not playing this guy? But uh, bought your stuff, learned it all, and just, and just absolutely, and, and, and such a, a, you're just one of my heroes. You really are. Ricky Skaggs, uh, one of the worst whippings I ever got was because I was listening to Ricky Skaggs. <laughs> <laughs> God's honest truth, I was at school. I was not allowed to listen to country music. It was gospel music only, or you're going to hell. And that was it. So I was at school one day, and this boy had this little tape, and it had blue lettering, I believe, but it had uh, Crime My Heart Out of You. It was that record. And, and he said, and I was, we were talking about country music, and Dad don't let me listen to country music, but he said, you got to hear this. It's unbelievable. And I was like, okay, let me hear And I had a little Walkman, and I was, I couldn't stop. I was just like, oh my gosh. Ricky Scoggs guy. <laughs> so uh, I begged him. I said, listen, I'll be your best friend. I promise forever. Just let me take this home, please. Please. And the kid was like, yes, take it home. And so I got home. I'm not allowed to listen to country music. But I got home. I snuck. My brother was gone. He was over at a friend's house. I snuck his Walkman. Never take my Walkman. But I did. And so I've got his Walkman. I'm laying back on the bed. I've got Ricky Skaggs on loop. Just over and over. My mom won't be home till 6.20. And about 5.40, I'm laying there with my eyes closed, and the headphones come off. Oh. Jerked off my head. It's mom. She's home early. <laughs> and so she grabs it, and she puts it on. Ricky, that album is one of the most clean albums ever. <laughs> but there's a song on there that goes so round, so firm, so fully. Yeah. That's my gal. And it was playing, and mom put it on. <laughs> That's why you don't listen to country music. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching. <laughs> Where's my little boy Aiden at? Where's he at? Come here. I'll sit here with you. <laughs> talent while your dad's tuning. Show him how fast. Come on, do it. Come on, do it for me. Go for it. <laughs> We're talking about honor your father and mother, and it was just amazing the way he put it. And I, I looked back there to make sure Aiden was listening, and Aiden was going, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love this little guy so much, you know. Uh, I think about, uh, I've also been to, to the uh, Holocaust Museum in Israel, and I remember what struck me the most was uh, every time I think about it, you know, I, 
I see it in my head is the little kids out in the street. Yeah. Yeah. The little kids on those, those uh, train cars. You know, it's, yeah. And so I can't, all I can think about is my little lady. I want to cuddle my little lady. Yeah. And so the whole time I went through there, I'd see these little kids. Mm -hmm. you, know, you think of your own kids, mm -hmm. and it breaks your heart. Mm -hmm. Aiden understands when I say that to him, but he doesn't fully understand the level of how much I love Aiden. Even right now, he has no idea, but he will. Yeah. One day he's going to have kids. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that my mom loved me as much as she did. And she used to do this over me, and I'd be like, oh, my. Sure, I understand. Of course I get it. And I had no idea. Um, I love him more than he knows. And I wanted to write a song about it and uh, that deals with that message. And, uh, and he, uh, we talked on the way to school this morning, and he asked me to sing. He wanted me to sing it, and, I, and he wanted to be up here with me. Is that right? And he said he would smile for everybody. So guess what? I think Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Called He Don't Know That Yet. Let me see. Let me put her up a little bit. Let me put her up a little bit. Why are you laughing? Because. Who's strong? Me or you? Uh oh. Wow. <laughs> There we go. When you watch me drive a nail with a hammer in one hand, like I'm some kind of put two boards together, Superman. I'm just your average everyday home depot weekend guy. Sometimes I get home, won't slap out, and I barely kiss his mama. And that football's in his hand, saying, come on, Dad, you promised. And we'll win them backyard Super Bowls with one tired quarterback. But he don't know that yet. He don't know that life ain't nothing like it is on TV. When I say that'll hurt him, I can tell he don't believe me. And half the time the man thinks I'm is scared to death, but he don't know that yet. So he'll find out my love of fishing. Watching his barber sing. Yes, and I brought the toys. The money came from me. Thank <laughs> God, gone back. It didn't put itself together. Why you slept? But you don't. <laughs> <laughs> he don't know that life ain't nothing like it is on TV. I say that'll hurt you. I can tell he don't believe me. And half the time the man he thinks I am is scared to death. But he don't know that yet. No, he don't know that life ain't nothing like it is on TV. When I say that'll hurt you, his little brave heart don't believe me. Dinosaur pajamas kneeling beside me, talking to Jesus. Man, that's the best. Yes, it is. But he don't know that yet. He don't know that yet. One day he will. This is the day.
see if she could come and, and sing tonight, uh, but she wasn't sure if she could make it, and uh, her husband is not able to be here tonight, or else I know he would have been, because he, he actually donated these stained glass windows, Marty Stewart did, wow. so they had a little bit left over from their house, and he gave us those, and Joel Hemphill gave us the bell that's out there, and, uh, and all the wood in here is from our property, and Alan cut it all down, and, and milled it himself, and then some of this wood down here, this dark wood my dad gave us, so very special, but, um, but anyway, um, so Connie Smith is here. He's been, he's been faithful. Yeah. He's faithful even when we're unfaithful. 
And I thank you so much for that. I thank him for the gifts that he gives. We were talking about tonight. Uh, he gives us the gift of friends. And when God gives you a friend, they're a friend forever. You don't have to worry about hurting their feelings or something like that. They're just your friend. And if you don't see them for a week or a month or a year or ten years, you just pick up where you left off. That's, right. That's the way God is. His gifts and his calling are without repentance. Mm -hmm. That's right. And my calling from the Lord was comfort you, my people, and speak mm. tenderly to their heart. Mm. And I love doing that with all my heart. Mm. And uh, there is, I remember when I, I announced that I was a Christian and all of that when I first got saved in 1968. And uh, I, I quit the business for a while because I've got five children and I had little girls, uh, one, two, and three, and uh, plus two boys a little bit older. And I just couldn't stand leaving them anymore. So I quit for a while. And when I came back, uh, everybody thought I had gone into gospel music. And I loved what uh, B.J. Thomas said. I'm not a Christian singer. I'm a singer who happens to be a Christian. Right. And that's where God, he says, stay in the station where I've called you. And I know that I quit for a while to be with my children and went back to help support them. But God has been so wonderful. And, I, and, and he does things like, when I hear Ricky, or when I hear Vince Gill sing, and then he starts playing his guitar, his guitar playing is as anointed as his singing. Yeah. 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 And, and the same with Ricky and, and the, the whites. There's so so many gifts that God has given us that surround us. And I love sharing. I love if I buy something new and I like it, I tell all my friends. Because it, it's you must just, be an Isaac's. <laughs> I am. I'm friends with the Isaacs. I'm adopted in <laughs> more ways than one. But I love the Isaacs with all my heart. They have been such a blessing to me. And I wish Marty was here because he's the best, and you would really love him and love what he has to say. And he called me the other night. He said he was in Pittsburgh, and he said, guess what? We're playing a block from all that tragedy where it happened. Please pray that we know the things to say and how to minister to people. And uh, so it was uh, God. He said, I know where I'm here, why I'm here tonight. Mm -hmm. right. So God's a good God. And he right. does. He has a plan. A plan to prosper us and not to harm us. A plan to give us hope and a future. And, and he has that for each one of us. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I wanted to sing a song that uh, I've, I've been to Israel twice. And I, I, I can't wait to say, Marty's never been. I can't wait to get him over there. Yeah. I know it will change his life yeah. as it did mine. And I, I got to uh, walk through the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm. And uh, that was, uh, the, the, the wilderness of Judea really, really got me. Uh, I, I, I can't even explain how I felt when I was there, knowing that the Lord had been there all those days and how he had been alone and rejected and how he was there. And uh, just uh, when I got went to the upper room and I, I felt the presence mm -hmm. of, the Holy, uh, of the Pentecost there, and so many places when I got baptized in the Jordan River, uh, and there's just so so much. If you ever get a chance mm -hmm. to go to Israel, those that aren't going, you need you need to make that uh, on your bucket list for sure because it's a wonderful thing. But going through the garden and thinking about Jesus and what he went through when he was there, and yet he obeyed. And the Scripture says he learned obedience by the things that he suffered, and no one suffered more. And, and uh, I, I, I want to sing this song. Yeah. 
everybody, a lot of pastors, uh, Jasmine, uh, but anyway, um, and it would just be Pastor DeVries, our, our lovely pastor, uh, Cameron, and I should name names, but um, you just stored I did, but I, I, really, I just wanted to recognize the artists that felt this was important enough to just come and be here, and I wish I had time to get everybody to sing, but thank you so much for, for this, um, so good night. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, of course, it stinks when you're a huge celebrity because you always have to go last. But um, And uh, real quick, for those that are just tuning in on Facebook, we're doing this tonight to bless Israel because we love Israel. We're taking all of this money that we're collecting to bless Holocaust survivors and Israeli soldiers and orphans in Israel when we go in December. And we encourage you to go on theisaacs.com and donate tonight. We're going to be doing a raffle drawing for everybody that donates. For every $20 that you give, your name will go into a drawing uh, for an instrument signed by all these artists tonight, uh, mandolin, and also a football signed by uh, quarterback Terry Bradshaw, the four-time uh, Super Bowl champ and uh, Hall of Famer. Uh, and then also Reba McIntyre donated a gift basket with some things that she's autographed and donated. So if you're interested in it, it go and bless Israel anyway on the website. We need all the help we can get, and we got to raise thousands of dollars for this wonderful mission that we're doing. And the mandolin, yes, I mentioned that, that all the artists um, <laughs> signed the mandolin. So, all right. You're going to give away Not the this mandolin? one, not this one. Anyway, theisaacs.com, um, if you'll go on there and, and uh, you can give tonight, please uh, donate to Bless Israel. God will bless you back. And all of our friends here, we're celebrating Israel tonight, and we're blessing Israel. And um, so tonight, um, I I'll, I appreciate so much um, Vince and Amy for being here. Um, Vince, I think you told me you have to leave out tonight. Is that right? Oh or no. you, you can. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but it's so gracious, so busy, and I mean everybody is. But but I know that you guys are very busy, and you know it's not every day you get to have an eagle on your stage. So. Yeah. 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 Um, I always I was always Vince Gill's biggest fan, and. I knew every word of every line of every song he ever recorded. Some of you are there too. Um, and I never dreamed that um, in 1998 I would have the opportunity to meet him. And he produced a country record for me. And I got to tour with him for that year. And it was just a huge dream come true for me. And um, he's just a great guy, one of a kind. And I appreciate you so much. And Amy, we've gotten to know her um, just uh, here in the last several years better. Of course, you all know what a beautiful woman of God that she is. And I'm so grateful that you're here. Vince and Amy.
could see what the angels see behind the walls beneath the sea under the avalanche through the trees gone would be the mystery if i could see if i could hear what angels hear the thunderous sound of a crashing tear holy holy in my I've never doubted God in here if I could hear. Cause I'd see that love will conquer hate. There's always hope, it's not too late. I find the truth is easy to believe if I could see. His love's hello, and spirits come, and spirits go. I feel them, but they never show. If I could know, if I could stand where angels stand, and watch this old world while God commands, and see how love designed the plan, reminders on his feet and on his
It's beautiful to be in a room with uh, people you've had a lifetime with, yeah. Ricky and Buck and Sharon and Cher Cheryl and them I've known for 45 years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, these cats I've known for a little over 20 years. And, so I got 65 good years invested in this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I thought I'd sing a new song for you. Yes. Ask a songwriter what his favorite song is, and he'll say the next one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a little bit of a work in progress, as we all are, I guess. But, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, working on a new record and excited about some new songs. Kind of back to the back to the way it was in the early days. I'm making records again, but, but I can't prove it. Nobody has them. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> like the early days, when I first started making records, nobody had them either. I had a few in the middle, but it's kind of all evened out after the years. But uh, this song is inspired a, a good bit by the truth. About this girl right here. This song. You don't know this one. Oh no, you. you know, this is a new, oh, have you seen this one? I think you think we have. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, oh, that one. I heard it. I was hoping you'd do this. Yeah. Well, maybe I shouldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a worth. It. it was worth the trip to Hendersonville. Like make Ben cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, oh guys, you don't. Amy and I, we drew up, grew up completely different. Uh, couldn't have been more different. You know, back in the day, I was sweet on Cheryl when I was 17. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, for some reason, I didn't take. And, uh, <laughs> she came to her senses. Really? No, no, no. <laughs> I was in a band with Ricky for a little while. That didn't take either. <laughs> 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 yeah, we were we were struggling. We started a band and wasn't much work and wasn't much many gigs and I was the last one in, so I was the first one to go. <laughs> Rick sat me down and he said, Man, I'm sorry, I got some bad news. I'm like eighteen years old. He said, We're gonna have to let you go. And he sang better than anybody else. Uh, <laughs> I said, you can't fire me, Ricky. You can only free me. All <laughs> <laughs> well, these stupid jokes. All these stupid jokes. But uh, he is he is family to me. You know, he really is. Amen, bro. He's a big brother. And um, none of that stuff ever mattered. You know, because friendship is way more important than any gig you'll ever do. Right. So, uh, we're all good. I just love telling that story on you. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have been more proud of watching him yeah. in the Hall of Fame the other day. Yeah. Yeah. I've been having this good idea of starting a website. I know we're on Facebook tonight, right? Yeah. I thought for, uh, for uh, people that were believers or either had a speech impediment, we can have Facebook. Take it and run with it. <laughs> I'll just keep talking. <laughs> Better sing, buddy. I know. Just until I gotta leave right before Sonic closes. <laughs> <laughs> that happy hour is hard to turn down. <laughs> you mean it's Sonic? Well, like I was saying, Amy and I we, we grew up way different. You know, the, anytime the church was open. Amy and her sisters and her mom and dad, her family and grandparents, all of them were at church. And, and I never made it. I never made it to church much in my childhood. And I, was, I lean off 
awful hard on this girl now. Got my back, and she don't judge me. She gives my heart some time to change. Even at my worst, I know she loves me. She's my shelter from the rain. And when my When my baby pray, that's when my hand raised. <laughs> when my baby pray, when my baby pray, that's when my hand. up and said, oh, Vince Gill's found a new, you know, young singer and you, they're in love. It was so stupid. Um, so anyway, uh, I mean, no, no offense, but. <laughs> but, uh, but now I remember one time you called my room, uh, we were on tour somewhere and, and you called my room and you said, you'll never guess what I'm doing. Because Vince was, he was still a work in progress, right? And he was, all this Christian stuff was new to him. And he said, you'll never guess what I'm doing. And I said, what he said I'm reading the Bible and I said that's awesome I'm really proud of you and you sure that was me <laughs> <laughs> then he called me back like a few minutes later and he goes can I borrow your hair dryer <laughs> <laughs> but anyway no I, and you know we loved it we would talk about God a lot on the tour yeah. bus and um, those were just great days anyway will you please sing something else yeah we will 
Well, I know what everybody else wants to hear. You probably don't want to sing, especially my funeral director friend back there. Thank you to Spring Hill Funeral Home for being a sponsor. Uh, it's good for you. All the other businesses that are sponsoring here tonight, thank you so much. The director told me one time, he said, I don't mean no disrespect or anything, but you need to write another song. <laughs> <laughs> Hear that song again, I'll be good. <laughs> that's so famous. That's what's awesome. My most famous song that I'll ever have out of the gospel song. I love that. Yeah. It makes me feel good. My dream was for this to wind up in a hymnal someday. <laughs> Anybody sing that wants to? I know 
We're going to do one more to close out. And, uh, when peace like a attended Or when sorrows like seas in old Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is two years just busted his butt and made tonight a reality. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you so much for, for donating tonight to be here. Um, Candy, thank you so much for all of your help. And she reminded me that some of you did want to donate um, for, further. And if you do, you're welcome to hand it to mom. Mom, you can be the collector. Sure. Um, because, She's uh, Jewish. She'll take <laughs> <laughs> We certainly don't expect you to do anything more. You've already done enough. But thank you for being here. Thank you for everybody on Facebook for watching. We've had a great time. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, thank you for donating to Bless Israel. Go on theisaacs.com right now. This broadcast is fixing to end, so go right now, please. Donate on theisaacs.com and bless Israel, all right? Y'all had a good time tonight? <laughs>